Hey guys, my name is Andrew Pecoraro from Pex Metal Picks, and I'm here with... I'm Connie Scarbosa from Sea Space Cowboy. And you are the vocalist? I am the vocalist, yes. So, Connie, I want to start off talking about the major year that CU Space Cowboy has had. You got signed to Pure Noise Records, re-released your debut album with a couple new songs, put out a brand new album a month ago, and you're currently on tour with Knocked Loose. Yeah, it's been crazy. Which is an unbelievable year, really, for a band. Just any band. So how has it been dealing with this whirlwind of success? That has to be crazy. So it's been, it has been crazy. Um, we, it's kind of been a, a big, long process since last summer when we started getting offers from labels. And it was kind of this thing that took off and we've been struggling to, you know, deal with it, learning the inner working as we go along. But it's been really cool because... Yeah, we got to re-release all our old material, plus some new songs on Pure Noise. We got to do a lot of cool tours. We got to write and record a new album, which was a lot of fun, too. Well, fun and hard, but <laughs> duality. Um, and then, yeah, this tour. It's just kind of been a crazy experience since um, since last summer. Yeah, things have just kind of been going speed of light. It's kind of trying to keep up with everything, you know? I normally save this question until the end, but... Given that you guys have had such a crazy busy year so far, what is the next step? Do you have any plans, or will you just go home and relax for a little bit? <laughs> no, we have we have some stuff planned. It's definitely not going to be go home and relax time yet. Um, we have some tours coming up that haven't been announced yet. So we're we're since correlations came out, we're definitely planning on hustling now because why not? We put out new albums. I want to tour all the time, so why not just keep going? Yeah. So the new album, like we mentioned, it's called uh, The Correlation Between Entrance and Exit Wounds. Like I said, it came out a month ago. I think it was a really great follow-up for uh, Songs for the Firing Squad. Um, it's still really chaotic, but it, it feels a little bit more structured, and I was hoping if maybe you could shed a little bit, a bit, shed a little bit of light about, like, the goals that you guys as a band had for the album. So, with when Songs of the Fire Squad came out, when Pure Noise approached us about doing that, we kind of viewed it as the end of an era. So, we recorded those last two songs, and we were like, okay, so that's why we call it Songs of the Fire Squad. It's li like literal. It's like those are the songs we want to put to death. That was a, the first two years of Space Cowboy were done, and moving forward, we wanted to incorporate more emotion and more structure and more um, like just a, a wider range of things into our music than we had been before with the more fun playful dancey stuff we were all kind of at a different point in our lives str all with our own struggles and we're kind of like this music doesn't speak to us as much anymore what else can we do and we kind of decided to move towards something that explored a, a, a different sort of catharsis than the fun disco beats and, and just heavy breakdowns yeah watching you guys play tonight um the one part in late december where you talk about the house by the beach mm. really if you've heard of a band called death heaven I have, gives yeah. me huge death heaven vibes where it's sort of the uplifting mm. sadness it's, it's that, hard to explain but it was that, that's the thing i mean this when we wrote this album and it already had this, you know, sadness to it. And then when it came time to record it, um, my ex-girlfriend Natalie had committed suicide. So I was in a terribly dark place. I was doing a lot of drugs. I was getting blackout drunk every night. I was just struggling a lot to cope with um, her death and moving forward. So it kind of just happened that this album was occurring at the perfect time in my life to be like, I am in the worst part of my life right now and I need something to let it out and it, it was a struggle recording I mean it was two and a half weeks in the studio me struggling with addiction as well as trying to pour my heart out into these songs I mean I straight up missed days of recording because I went on benders and, would, and disappeared to LA so I would, like miss days I was like, that's how bad it had gotten I was just completely out of it but um by the time it was recorded, I, I finally had gained like a little bit of like closure and moved forward. So like recording this album was really important to me getting through that part of my life where I could just be like speak about mental illness, suicide, everything, addiction, everything that I've been dealing with. Because I didn't write any lyrics, so we got in the studio and I really? sat in the studio 
sometimes sober, sometimes not, just writing everything Wait a second. out. So you guys went to the studio to record this album, and you did not have any lyrics written. No. And we, you got in there, and you said the writing process was two and a half weeks? It was two and a half weeks, yeah. Well, the, it took us two and a half weeks to write the record, and I, we were on tour. We got home. I didn't... Um, you know, the event occurred right when I got home, and I was just so out of it, I couldn't. And we got to the studio, and I was like, okay, I have eight songs to write lyrics for. And I just started going, pouring wow. everything out. And it kind of was just like the perfect place to let everything out in yeah. that way. That's crazy. And I was going to have a follow-up question about Late December. It's probably my favorite song off the new record. Um, I think it's just, yeah, one of the most emotional mature songs from the band so far I, I agree um it was it was when that song was written I listened to it and I'm like okay um this is a really you know slower paced song but it has that uh, volatility to it so uh, so originally I was gonna write about like problems within um my relations with people that I had going on but then when Natalie took her own life. It was just the perfect time to be like, this is what the song's gonna be about. I told everyone, like, I'm writing about this, and this is all it will be about. And they're like, okay. And I just wrote it. It, it was, it took me the shortest time to write. I think I didn't do any revisions to it. I wrote it all out, and that's exactly what went on the record. What was it like shooting a music video for something so powerful and close to your heart? It was a long process, because when... Oh, shit. oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, when we, when that was what was decided for a music video, I told everyone, "Look, if we're gonna do this, I need um, to have you know full control over what's on the screen. I need to to be like this is like not. I don't ever want to be like nobody else's artistic op opinion matters. But I was like, if if I'm gonna agree to do this music video about this thing, like I need to like it needs to be me. Right. It was your yeah. song. So. Yeah. Um, so it was a long process crafting ideas and me working really closely with Cameron Nunez who shot it and we talked a lot and a lot and he did a great job of like helping me convey these ideas because I wanted to because in the song I don't really talk about certain aspects of why so I wanted to like show those where it's like the alcoholism the, all the wine um so the, the, the feelings of like you're not in reality like almost like de the um not being able to come to terms with it makes you just feel like you're in this alternate reality where things just don't exist. I spent days walking close to seven miles a day just doing nothing but that because I was just so torn away from reality by it. So it was really, it was a really hard, but I feel like it was what I needed to, to like finally be like, okay, I can like, this is like my testament to her and I can like move past this now yeah. and, and move on from that there's a lot of like my final expression of my grief for her because it was a long process um but that was kind of like this is it and we just we shot it and it was an extreme sense of relief once it was done it's really cool hearing you talk about sort of the new direction that you think CU Space Cowboy might be going um it sounds like we've maybe heard a little bit of that on the new album uh, I normally really don't like doing discussions about genres because everybody wants to complain. They all have their own opinions and different yeah. definitions of what's what. Um, I think it's funny, though, because CU Space Cowboy has a song called Don't Call Us Screamo, yeah. which is really funny. Um, and I kind of just wanted to talk about that because I feel like you guys are part of this metalcore revival yeah. thing that we'll get into in a minute. But I think a lot of newer fans have never probably even heard of a band like CU Space Cowboy, even though, you know, the sound is kind of a throwback. Yeah. They've never they, even heard this before. Yeah. So, um, so will you continue sort of having that chaotic element to your music and drop sort of like the sass core side of yeah, it? Yeah, well, I feel like in order to always be, to never lose our sense of identity, like it will always be chaotic. We'll always try to keep it grimy. Um, because that's just who we are. It's like, yeah, we're definitely moving away from like the sassy, sass core element of it because we did that for years. We we came, we made the point, and then now we're moving on. Um, 
But yeah, it will always be chaotic. Um, we just definitely are probably going to add more melodicness to it, as because that's just what we found we enjoyed. Because the ironic thing about this stop calling a streamer thing is we all came from like the screamo scene of like bands like Orchid, Drums, Dream, like all those bands. Yeah. Um, so that's like why, and we <laughs> named the song that because we were in the screamo scene um, when we first started before we kind of moved out. And pe- people call us a screamo band. We're like, no, 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 we're not a screamo band. This is a MySpace grind band. This is metalcore. Yeah. Um, That's what's always so funny, though, about the song names of screamo bands, even though you're saying you yeah. weren't one, is they're always so meta and, like, long-winded was, and yeah. pretty funny. It was, it, it was like, it was a tongue-in-cheek <laughs> joke at being put into that scene, even though we weren't. And it's kind of ironic because as we moved on, we kind of do have taken those melodic elements that exist in those screamo bands from back in the day, as well as you know metalcore bands like Poison the Well, Beloved, Hopes Fall, where they they kind of like almost merged together and like we're putting them back in. We're still not a screamo band, but you know we're, we're definitely moving back towards that melodic, <laughs> towards wanted, the melodic side of heavy music. I wanted to ask. It'll probably have to be updated in, in the future, but if you could definitively <laughs> say right now, just to settle it, what genre <laughs> CU Space Cowboy CU Space Cowboy is a metalcore band. Metalcore band, we, all right. Right now, we take from OG metalcore bands. That's our biggest influence is Poison the Well, Beloved Hopes Fall. I heard a little bit of... Uh, I know I said Death Heaven earlier, but there was also a section that reminded me of early Under Oath, too. Yeah, I mean, we also take, Which, yeah, Changing in Times, yep. fantastic record, 10 out of 10. Would love to just write a rip off of that record, of course we can't do that, but yeah. That that, that record is a huge influence for us, too. Um, Misery Signals, Seven Angels, Seven Plagues. Yeah, so we're, we're a metalcore band. That's okay. what we are. That is no, the perfect lead No in. more sasscore, we're metalcore now. <laughs> That's... That's the perfect lead into the next question. We talked a little bit about metalcore revival, which is this term that's come up in the last year or two. Has bands like Sea Space Cowboy, Knocked Loose, Wrist Me Razor, which is another one. Um, Vane, Year of the Knife, Code Orange, Jesus Peace, Sanction. There's really so many. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy how many have popped up in the last two years. Um, I wondered if you have any insight where all of this came from. I feel like hardcore in general is always evolving more and more to, and new ideas are new or new as in taking from old you know yeah. come back because we all love those bands we all love those old bands that we're, we listen to as we got into shit and I feel like yeah there's a certain sense of trendiness to it I mean I'll, I'll take Metalcore Revival over 29 scene any, any fucking day oh yeah but, I've been um, asking for this for so long because yeah. it's just like I was going to say this later on, but the fact that you guys are mostly grouped with hardcore bands shows how far modern metalcore has strayed yeah. from the roots. But, and that's the thing, is it's, it's a stray from the roots, but almost a graph from the past. It's like People are taking influence from Zayo and Converge again, and it's and merging it with the hardcore sensibilities of like heavy moshing and breakdowns. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting. And I, I feel like all it is, is, yeah, everyone's a little nostalgic right now. Like, yo, I love those bands. I love Poison the Wall. I love Zayo. Like, take from those bands and, and, and merge it with modern sensibilities and see what you can create from that. You touched a little bit on the trendiness factor of it. And, um, and I'm glad you did because I had a question that... There are sort of these trends in metalcore. You could go back as far as you want. I think one of the most recent ones was what Sworn In did with the Death Card album, yeah. and then you saw 50 bands come out with that sound, and it yeah. lasted a year or two, and now most of them are done. Um, before that, it was Asking Alexandria with yeah. their out. Then you have Make Me Famous copy. Like everybody, everything follows trends, and that's it's, it's kind of illustrated even in what we do now is. Yeah, we were throwback MySpace team. We ripped off Heavy Ever Lolo, if you prefer March of Flames, Blood Brothers, all of the Hayworth, like all those bands. Like, that was our shit. Um, but now that that we already did that, we're kind of already looking to move past that. And like, yeah, there are bands now that are starting to do that shit too because the 29 scene got popular and was like, oh, I like this stuff too. And like that was kind of our like, okay, that's my that's my sign to exit. It's like this is a thing now. Kind of want to just yeah. Sorry, the question it. wasn't really meant to be. I'm not saying or calling anybody out for copying no, or trend or anything, but it was more of just a. 
Um, as a band who is in this currently, and you've talked about how you're going to evolve out of that, do you think um, sort of the trend of what we're seeing will last a while, or do you think other bands will move out too? It's impossible to tell, because you, it can either go one of two ways. It can either be what we see now is like more bands taking metalcore influence, and it's cool, or there's going to be a new thing that pops up and everyone's going to like, like beat down is going to come back and everyone's going to start beat down bands again. You, you never know. It's really hard to tell. I feel like the, the whole scene thing is going to die soon. And like, fine. Yeah, it's, next year when yeah. 29 scene doesn't yeah, exist yeah. anymore. It's, it's fine, you know. Um, but it's impossible to tell what we'll on. We'll, we'll, I mean, maybe everybody will start writing kickback riffs again and who knows. I don't know. It, yeah. It's impossible to tell. And how has it been playing sort of like hardcore festivals and sort of crowds that in recent years might be more accustomed to straight up hardcore bands rather than the early? It's been really cool because we hit that nostalgia factor that everyone likes. Like, yo, I love these bands back then. So everybody can just have fun with it back, like when we primarily focus on like that style. Nowadays it's a bit different and people can connect with it on a different level. But yeah, back when we started to go to the hardcore scene, I expected everyone to fucking hate us. Like, who, who are these scene kids playing there? Everyone, like, even, like, this tour, like, I'm sure, like, bands on this tour expect us to show up with swoopy black hair and fucking, like, tight-ass jeans and neon shirts. But we're not like that, because we all love hardcore. We just happen to be like, we love scene music, too. Yeah. Let's bring it back. So it was always... But it turned out great. People loved it. It's a throwback. You can have fun to it. You can dance to fucking weird disco beats. You can mosh to really heavy breakdowns. So it, w- it was accepted pretty fucking well. Um, and even, like, the newer stuff's accepted, of course, even more because it's, it's OG metalcore. And, like, everybody wants to flex about how OG they were and be like, I fucking love Zayo back in the day. It was sick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know Varial's new album with the Deftones. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's sick. I love oh, it's that. so good. The I'm also not great. that big of a fan of like beatdown in general. So yeah. this is, I mean, to me, anything is better than what they were doing in the beatdown album. So I'm, I, I love Varial's back in the day, but what they're doing now with pulling that Deftones um, influence is super cool, and that's like a, a nice sign of moving forward by taking from the past because. Art in general is really hard. You're never going to reinvent anything. Art has been done to death. I mean, we're in a postmodern era. It's it's been done. So, I think that pulling from the right things in the past is a great move because we are at a time when we're all nostalgic for that shit. I mean, no, everybody still listens to that terms, of course, but we all want to recapture how we felt when we were young. Yeah, to death and a new spin on it. Yeah, if and anybody can offer it. that, then yeah. You can't complain about it. I mean, that's the thing. Is like, I would love to do Thursday, but with fucking ass beater breakdowns. Because I listen to Thursday, I love it, but I'm like, I wish there was a fucking breakdown I could watch <laughs> to here. And like, it's like those kind of things that like we take. You take the best elements of what you loved in the day, back in the day, and you mix it with what you're doing now, with modern sensibilities and a reinvention of what you loved when you were younger. Yeah. Um, this next one. I hope it's okay if we delve into. If it's not, we can skip over it. Um, Part of the reason I bring up the hardcore scene and sort of playing to those fans and just like that community in general is you are a trans woman Mm -hmm. and typically the stereotype of the hardcore scene is that they aren't that inclusive to women, either in bands or even at shows. Um, So... That's sort of an element of how has it been playing in this community? It's been, I have not encountered any problems at all. It's been fine through and through. So it, I feel like the, the perception is like, yeah, from people on the outside looking from other scenes, like it might seem like that because it is, there's a very macho element to it. We mosh, whatever. But no, I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. I haven't had experience any. That's really. awesome. I mean, I just have like minor things, but I never experienced like a major like conflict of like, okay, like we're gonna throw hands right now, you yeah, know, anything like that. Yeah, because I know, especially in recent years, I guess when you think of hardcore, and I'm not throwing shade at harm's way at all. Yeah, but like their vocalist is a beast like that guy oh, is the stereotypical yeah. definition of hardcore and like the fans show up to like see this just like monster guy throw down and they're killing it in the pit and yeah. stuff so 
Um, so I was just curious what your experience has been sort of I, integrating I, into that. I mosh, I crowd kill, I, I love it. I mean, and like I remember seeing the Harm's Way dude when I like when I was like 16. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, that is a beast of a man. But it never was like this, holy fuck, I got to stay away from him. It was like, okay, like, because I, I would, I'm more interested in like, if a scene, and I'm not, hardcore has been accepting, but if a scene wasn't accepting, I'd be more interested in drilling my way into that to be like, I'm here. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, you know? making them accept yeah, you. Yeah, ex- instead of being like, oh, I'm so scared. What the fuck? It's like, no, I want it. I love this. I want to be a part of this, and I will be a part of it. I will push and shove my way through anything I have to to be a part of this because it's what I love. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I had a follow-up question, but I'm blanking on it, so we'll just jump into the next one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what the answer for this one's going to be either, but pretty much all of your live videos and your music videos, you play with your hair down in your face. I was a little... Uh, I was wondering if you would do the interview, if I would, no. would just see the hair in the I, face or how it would I go. just do that because I make weird faces when I scream. So okay. I'm, like, I'm going to cover my That's eyes, what I was going to ask is if nose. it's, so it's just sort of part of the persona yeah. of you yeah. on stage. And like, I mean, I've had straight across bangs have been in this band and I was like looking at myself, I'm like, damn, I look fucking weird when I do this. <laughs> so like, I'm like, I'm just going to cover my face. And, and plus like, I don't know, it just feels right on stage and stuff and in videos to not be like full face like staring at you yeah no it's kind of nice it's kind of like the like death metal bands you play yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's what I used to do when I played the screamo bands I mean when I played the screamo bands I wouldn't even face the crowd I had my everybody all the members of my band have the ba- our backs to the crowd and that was like the thing it was like don't even look at them <laughs> fucking turn your backs just play your music so. oh I know what I was going to say earlier I was going to say uh, one of the coolest moments of your show earlier was when you set the mic down during the breakdown and came and moshed in the crowd. That's so sick. I'll be pretty sad the day that CU Space Cowboy gets too big to be able to jump down in the crowd and I've mosh tri- it up with people. I've tried any show that I play, unless it's going to be like a very big danger to, to <laughs> myself, I will do everything I can to stage dive, to either a spin kick on stage or in the crowd whatever I can I, I just love it I yeah, love the stage was a little crowded tonight yeah, it was for a the crowded. mobility but um, but like I love doing shit like that so I will always do as much as I can and then I, um, we're also we used to be super influenced by like the chariot stage presence stuff. that oh used to be this band's God, thing that's the best live show like, I've ever seen our old lineups like every breakdown somebody would be throwing their shit behind their back or our bass would be taking this bass off throwing it up in the air like yeah, we love that kind of shit. We don't do it so much anymore because the music's kind of changed it's a little bit different. But back when we were a chaotic band, it was always go as crazy as you fucking can. Like I, I have a scar here because our bass, our old bass, actually busted a hole through my face with his bass. First song I set, so I had a <laughs> hole all the way through my mouth. Did you just swing it back at yeah, you? Yeah, it was. We had we were in Portland and there was a lot of room, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just pace around. First breakdown hits, you just threw it back like that. Clipped me in the face for a song. I like fell the floor, like spat all this blood out on the ground. So I'm just like, fuck. So I played the rest of the song. I looked at my our, our guitarist. I'm like, how do I look? He's like, you look fine. Um, so I played the rest of the set, bleeding onto this button down white shirt I was wearing. So it's bleeding all over me, spitting blood, just fucking. And then we like hung out for a bit, and then finally I was like, okay, I should probably go to the hospital to get stitched up. <laughs> Got to the hospital. There was a, a line and shit, but I checked in. They were all just like, um, I, I waited for 30 seconds. I had, <laughs> I, there was a, it was a full lobby. I waited for 30 seconds. They rushed me into a room to get my information. Didn't even finish getting that information before they took me to the to the operating whatever where they were going to stitch me up. Because I was just sitting in their lobby just like, what? <laughs> yeah, oh, making a mess. Bleeding still. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I was totally calm, so I was just like, shock and shit. Like, everyone was like, oh, we should go to the hospital. Just I'm like, no, no, no. Stay and sell merch. Um, I'll wait. It's fine. <laughs> so I like sat in the van. Oh, that's so epic. Wow. Um, but yeah, we love being crazy, and I like that shit too. Because why would you want to watch vocalists who just stands there? Yeah. Why would you want to watch any band that just stands there? Like, I know it's so sad. I I don't think people these days know as much about how the shows used to be with yeah, just to be the insane Dillinger chaos Space plan. Chariot, uh, yeah, like all the even like Norma, all of them, yeah, yeah. Like all of them were just doing even crazy let live. Shit. Yeah, I had it for a while. Yeah. 
I remember uh, seeing their vocalist at a warp tour and he like Butler, yeah. ripped uh, one of the monster cans in half and was just like writhing around on the stage screaming and like slashing his back up with this like yeah. like broken monster That's, can just like dream like bleeding down his back it was brutal but I, it's so cool to yeah, see it is. i mean why i mean if you're doing, i don't know how you could do that every show yeah but I mean, it's a bit hard i mean why if you're not doing this for cathar if you're doing this for catharsis why wouldn't you lose your fucking mind on stage you know why wouldn't you go crazy yeah i mean like today the stage is a little small so hard but normally like ethan our guitarist and stage right or whatever <laughs> He's fucking always moving. He's just always going around. And sometimes he does. Sometimes he does the fucking throw the guitar around you <laughs> and does some kicks. He's always just going crazy because, like, if you're there to let emotions out, why wouldn't you just give everything you can in that moment? Like that's why, like, I'll fucking stage dive even though I'm tired as fuck and it hurts. I'll still dive over and kick some kid in the head because, like, <laughs> I just want to. Yeah. No. Well, Connie, that is all the questions that I have. Uh, is there anything you want to or can say about future plans or just anything it's, you want to say to the fans listening? No, I mean, it's so up in the air right now. We just released an announcement. We don't have any plans. I mean, we have a few tours I can't talk about. but So we will be playing a lot of shows in 2020, but um, albums and shit, no, nothing planned right now. It's, we're very much just, like, coasting on what we just put out. All right. Well... Yeah, thank you so much for your time. I know you have to go do a uh, guest spot with Knox Loose, I but do, yes. um, everybody make sure you check out CU Space Cowboys' new album, The Correlation Between Entrance, Entrance and, and Exit Wings. I was going to split them for a second. <laughs> um, it's really good, and uh, you know, even though the debut album was also killer, this new one really gets me excited for the band's future, and I'm really excited Same. to see where you guys go next. So, Especially because that old one was just a bunch of old material from two years ago. Yeah. I very much like... I still loved yeah. it, though. I put a review I, I up love, of it on I love the page. It too. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. Everybody, make sure you check them out. Uh, you know, check out their pages for upcoming tours, and make sure you come see them, because they absolutely kill it live. Thank right. you. Thank you. Thanks.